Welcome back, everyone. It's Stray Faye here with another episode of Cafe Enchante, a visual novel about a girl called Kotone who inherited her late grandfather's cafe, and I guess the grandpa also knew some very colorful characters, <laughs> like this trespasser wearing a helmet. Put on our voice modulator for this. I see. So Suwan did indeed pass away. The cafe hasn't been open for months. I had feared as much. I mean, his, his regular clothes on. Right, I gotta remember to turn off the modulator every time I switch characters. So it's a little difficult. So sorry if I mess it up. Got Elegant Trespasser. I believe that's probably the angel. I still cannot believe it. He was so full of energy the last time I saw him. First Trespasser. Humans don't live long after all. He was pretty old, although he didn't look like it. Yeah, Grandpa was pretty... Grandpa was pretty buff. <laughs> look, look at him in the prologue. He was, he was buff Grandpa. Now that I think of it, the reason he made us all leave must have been because he knew because he knew he was he'd be passing away soon. That may be so. Regardless, it's a tragedy that we lost him. The rowdy trespasser. <laughs> Stop looking so sad. He's dead. There's nothing we can do about that. Ignis, please take care with how you choose to address the situation. Shut it. If how I talk gets the old man to crawl back out of his out of his grave, I'll say whatever the hell I want. But we know that won't happen. He died. And since that's the fact, we should be thinking about what we should do next, am I wrong? does impress me how you always have so much common sense, despite the way you choose to appear. Indeed. Everything about you makes you seem- <laughs> makes you seem like a ruffian. What is he wearing? I don't know, his shirt looks kinda- he doesn't really look like a delinquent. Uh, looks a little bit comfortable, I guess? He's wearing a comfy shirt. Hey, you two aren't ones to talk when it comes to looks, especially you, Helmet Head. I don't know, because he's. Helmet Head was a little bit casual. <laughs> he just had the helmet. Ignis raises a viable point. Now that Suwan's gone, what will become of Anchante? The answer to that question would have considered all sorts of things, right? Exactly right. The only reason we are able to come here is because of Lauren Suwan. Yeah, it's impossible to force our way back in here if we've been pushed out. Indeed, so that being the case, about the person who holds our very fate. That is, the girl holding her head and hiding under the table right now. We should do something about her, don't you think? <laughs> is that what we're doing? We're just like, no, 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 do not want. <laughs> the fact that these men came out of nowhere through, that, through a door that led to nothing. The fact that it felt like their appearances changed from the moment I glanced away from them. The fact that they called themselves guests from another world. I just don't know what's going on anymore. Honestly, I just want them to leave me alone until I wake up from this terrible dream. I hold my head in thought, but as if ignoring my pathetic plea. Your name's Kotane Awaki, right? The four men I can only see as suspicious trespassers come closer and closer to me. Is she really the old man's granddaughter? Just gotten hard to believe. There's no doubt. She clearly has traits of someone's face. Oh yes, this magnificent beard. 
The young man who had wings spoke gently, peering into my face. We apologize for the sudden visit. I assure you that there's no reason to fear us. R really I get it to go back to Absolutely. I swear upon Suan's name. There's no reason to be suspicious of us. Why do you back away? Okay, shut up, Canis. We're not gonna get anywhere with you. Anyone would suspect someone who looks the way you do. <laughs> yeah. D does he have anything under the helmet, or...? I'm guessing he's based off... ...the Doolahan. Because we have, like, I, we got, like, someone with horns. I'm guessing he's a demon. And then we got an angel. And then we got the headless knight. Ooh, yeah, I just assume he's, he's based off a of Doolahan. Kotone, I know it's daunting to be with such strange people, but can you at least listen to what we have to say? Why do you keep talking to me as if you aren't one of them? No matter how many times I close my eyes or pinch my cheeks, it doesn't seem like the situation will disappear. I take a deep breath, stand up with caution, and with eyes half closed, take a look. There's the man I first met, or rather, the one that held me unexpectedly. <laughs> he was a young man who had a refined aura to him, despite breaking into the cafe. Then the rowdy-looking man glaring at me with an unamused look on his face. Do we have nothing to say? Suspicious trespasses. We have nothing to say about Helmet Man. <laughs> Rip Helmet Man. They're all suspicious considering they broke into the cafe. But ignoring that one with the helmet on, they seem to be normal people, perhaps? Really? <laughs> We're gonna judge Helmet Man, but like, alright, everyone else is okay, I guess. Even the one has a little fire coming out of him, and the other one has wings. Still. Y yeah, remember when they looked like that. <laughs> then, what was with how they looked just now? Hmm. Um, let me figure out what's going on. You are... Well, says the right answer to this one. <laughs> I, won't, I won't mess around too much with... <laughs> With the uh, wrong answers. <laughs> Don't want to get another game over. <laughs> we're, we're guests, right? Seems, they seem pretty familiar with Anchante, and they do seem to know Grandpa. So the answer that all, that all leads to is... Are you guests of the cafe? That's it. You know, we're actually regulars. We're the ones who hang around here all the time. You hang around here? Yeah, from open until close. We'll be staying saying good morning to good night in one visit. For me, I essentially made residence there. That's actually a bit of a nuisance. But who are these people in the first place? The very first moment I met them. How they looked when they first appeared, and when I saw them in that brief moment. The man clad in armor over his entire body. The white- <laughs> the man with the white wings on his back. The wavering flames. The way they looked back then. Uh, everyone? I feel like you all looked much different when you first got here. Oh, we look different. You mean how we look when we use our powers. Oh, I see. Right, we do look quite different when we do that, huh? 
We just do it unconsciously, and so I never really paid it any mind, so this reaction is kind of refreshing. Wait, you're the only one who's not like... I mean, I mean the, the angel looked like he just donned a robe, but he doesn't have his wings out. The first dude still is wearing his regalia. Huh? How we look? You mean like... Oh, oh hi. You just transformed by Will. <laughs> well, you look very, very exotic. There's a lot of belts you have on there, dude. This? No sooner than he spoke, he transformed as if you were in a movie. Just then, a wind so hot that made it hard to breathe swept across my face. Oh, turn back. I nod emphatically, and everything disappears the next instant. <laughs> I think he's- he just- he just- This guy's wearing casual clothes, I mean, he still has the helmet, you can't- You can't, like, illusion a head or something. A little off-footing. Hmm? Truthfully, it is difficult to answer what this really is when I ask about it. For me, I take up a bit of space, you see? Lord Swan scolded me, scolded me a bunch for it, always telling me that I was in the way. <laughs> you know, as pleased as you sound right now, you're also in the way. I suppose you could say that this is one of our forms of existence. Oh yeah, here we go. We got, we got, we got the wings. I like how he just changes his robe as well. Like, like he he needs a he has a he needs a different robe for his casual outfit, I guess, which does not even look that casual. We are beings capable of doing this. That is all I can say about who we are. I I see. Are all of your questions answered? Great. <laughs> Calling the master is a stretch. I went from I don't get it to I have no idea what's happening. Then in a spark of curiosity, I asked another question. Um, then how about you? Are you able to do that too? As if he didn't expect me to ask that, he looked a bit surprised and then... <laughs> what's with that face? <laughs> You're a bit of a perv, huh, Kotone? What are you talking about, me? What? What makes you see that? I didn't ask you to get naked. And so, by asking those few questions, I came to the following conclusion. These men were in fact outsiders, separated far from the rules of this world. So, what or who really are all of you? It seemed ridiculous to have to ask such a question, but I have no other choice but to do so. I reluctantly ask my question, and the men all look at each other with their different expressions, some that seemed surprised, some that understood. I see. Lord Zwan really did keep this from you, didn't he? The most suspicious, the one with the helmet, which was glowing oddly on the inside, spoke as he was pushing his chest forward. Then allow me to introduce myself. Yeah, okay. There he is, Canis. My name is Canis. Canis is Spada. I name. I am a knight of the fairy, wo fairy world Medeo. I was under the great care of Lord Suwan. Il Fado de Rie? I am Il. Il Fado de Rie. I'm an angel of the heavenly world, Kaelm. Or rather, I was an angel, fallen after breaking the laws of my world. I have been in the care of Suwan as well. He was quite a splendid man. Ignis Carbunculus. Ignis Carbunculus, a demon beast from the beast world bestia. <laughs> B 
best years, the best world. So we got Mr. Pfizer. This is gonna be oh god, what do I call him? Like if I call him Monsieur, I'm gonna think of like like Monsieur, like like Bon Sewer. But if I call him Miser, I'm just like, hi Miser. It's gonna be like a Michael and Mikhail situation here. I guess I'm last, huh? I'm from the demon world, Asmodia. I'm Miser Rex. I'm the powerful demon king, as you can see. Nice to meet you. Hi, why is the demon king here? And <laughs> would you like some coffee, sir? Actually, I have some coffee right here. Probably a little cold, but... Hmm. Um... <laughs> Cause I can ask. I I'm- I'm more, most interested in the knight, so I'm gonna- A knight? Wait, I can't process what's happening. I crashed down with a headache caused by all the strange words and weird introductions. At the least, I was able to understand that all these people are absolute weirdos. Out of all those people, if I were to pick who was the strangest of all... No. Oh. <laughs> We're so suspicious of him. Just because he can't. Like, I guess the missing head is probably causing some issues. Um, you're Canis the Knight, was it? Yes, Canis is fought up. Again, my condolences for what happened. Th thank you. He looks strange, but he is gentlemanly. He is, he is a knight, I guess. He's going for that knightly, that knightly vibe. Putting that aside, there's a lot of things I'd like to ask. Yes, you are Swan's granddaughter. I shall answer you to the best of my abilities. <laughs> I am 190 centimeters tall. My weight is a secret. I have several hobbies, including weight training and gardening. I <laughs> like his little flames also change as well. Uh, no wait, that's not what I want to know. Hang on, why is your weight a secret? That's such a silly- wait, that's not important. Yeah, why is his weight a secret? Is he- is he self-conscious about it? What is important is what's obvious. I want to know why you're dressed like that. In particular, that helmet! Why a helmet? After my short tirade, Canis thinks for a moment and speaks. Actually, I thought I coordinated my attire quite well today. Do you feel something is off? C coordinated? Yes, when I came to the human world, so on advised me not to stand out too much. And that's why you have the that outfit on? Taking another look, from the neck down, he seemed like any other guy around town with the normal shirt and vest on. But his neck up was covered in by an iron helmet, like one for the Middle Ages. I can't possibly be the only one here who noticed Grandpa's advice hadn't been applied very well at all. Maybe they'll think it's cosplay. <laughs> I have to class to the side to find the Demon King! Snickering as if you read my mind. <laughs> What's with that face? He's just so amused. You have found another questionable point. It's not as if I found another point, it's everything about you. The light gleaming from his helmet catches my eye. It looks like almost flames, but what in the world is that? Um. What's that light coming from your neck? This is... Those are just computer graphics. You can see the color changing, right? What? I, I know that's not what it is. Just leave it at that. It's such a drag to try to explain it to. Seriously? 
It's clearly not normal, though. Okay, well, I guess we're, we're done interrogating Canis. Uh, guess we'll, oops. Oh, okay, that's the log. I don't know what I pushed. That's about the demon, I guess. He's the first one who popped up. A demon king? Even I realize how dumbfounded I sounded as those words spilled. Words spilled. Well, words are hard. I'm sorry. Words spilled from my lips. The man standing in front of me, Miser. I vaguely remember him saying something like that the, f the first time he appeared. Right, a demon king. That's the major role in, the, in a human world, right? You've heard of my name before, yes? I never heard of Miser, the demon king, but... Human world. Referred to this world where the heroine and other humans live. A major role? You mean that sort of character? Like the one in video games? Right, yes. We massacre humans, conquer worlds, ascend into the darkness, kidnap lovely princesses, uh, that sort of thing. So if you let your guard down, I'll kidnap you too, princess. Um... Talking about massacring people with that smile on doesn't seem quite right. Well, even if I am one, I'm not on the job, so you don't need to call me Demon King. Just, just Miser's fine. <laughs> I'm off the clock, guys. That's fine. We're, we're done massacring. The de de demonic king of evil. Familiar in RPGs and fantasy stories, the standard is abducting princesses and engulfing the world in darkness. One should raise their level and acquire legendary armaments before facing him. Thanks, game, for clearing that up. Oh, but you can give me a nickname like Michi or Michan. Nickname makes it feel like you're a bit closer to that person, don't they? No, I have no need for that. I don't need to close the gap between us. In any case, I suppose I should ask about someone else. Uh, I guess we'll talk about the fallen angel next. What do I do? Heavenly worlds and angels and demon worlds and demon kings. There's so many things wrong to the point that I don't know how to react. How much of this this are serious are they serious about and how much of this is a joke? As I sit struggling on what to ask next, one of them walks towards me. Kotone, I am certain this is overwhelming, but there's no need to understand everything at once. I'm just making sure my audio levels are okay. I shall try to explain some things myself, but all of, all of us in this cafe Considering you will be its new owner. You... you're... what was it? Ilfa? Close. Unfortunately, that is incorrect. My friendship level won't rise at this rate. Wait. <laughs> are, we, are, we, are we doing some... some, uh, some dating some mechanics here? Friendship level? I am the fallen angel, Il Fado de Rie. Feel free to call me Il if you like. Yeah, I, I will. That <laughs> Your name is a little long, so Il, Il is fine. Il smiles after this explanation. I'm not entirely sure if he's a an fallen angel, but there's definitely an otherworldly aura about him that would make me believe so. He carries himself with poise and seems to be the most normal out of the four of them. Oh... Did the release date change? I was so looking forward to counting down for this. I give an exasperated look at the fallen angel who gestured to excuse himself as he takes out a smartphone. Where'd you get that? <laughs> um, what are you doing? I was notified about a release date change and I am checking the site to confirm. I do not get any signal in the heaven heavenly world. Okay. Alright, yeah, that's fine. Let's, let's connect to our Wi-Fi. Here's the password. Oh. But they are adding a new character. I never would have thought that character would get their own route. Um. <laughs> he claims to come from another world, yet he just naturally took out a smartphone. On top of that, I really have no idea what he's mumbling about. 
Guess if he seems normal, even this guy has something wrong with them. And I don't know. <laughs> Are there Otome games in heaven? Alright, last one is a beast. So, how am I supposed to be responding to these earth shattering self introductions? Though rigid from shock, I noticed something. Hi. That one, the one who calls himself Ignis, was staring at me. Hi. <laughs> what you looking at, dude? He's scary! I could feel his gaze upon me. Yan. But looking a little closely, the print on his t-shirt is kind of cute. Who <laughs> dressed him? That is a kind of a cute shirt. For someone who yells a lot. And could probably be voiced by the same voice actor who did Bakugo. <laughs> Yan. <laughs> huh? Um, I mean... Unable to withstand his piercing gaze anymore, I gather my courage and address him. You're the demon beast Ignis, right? Yeah. Um, did I do something wrong? I don't know why he's staring at me. Well, that's what I thought until he dismisses me with a grunt and looks away. No. I just thought you were a pretty plain girl. Being that you're the old man's granddaughter. Whoa! Dude, I am not plain. Uh, Cotton is- Cotton is a cutie. I'm sorry I don't have grandpa's <laughs> magnanimous beard and his stature. Huh? He flips his head to the side after muttering his rude comment. Are you gonna be a sundere right here? Why do I have to receive this kind of abuse in our first meeting? And so, after a bit of conversation... That's right, now that Suwan's gone, I guess we can't drink his coffee anymore, huh? That would be the case. More and more, I realize we have lost a great person. Heh. <laughs> Coffee's always bitter. Not being able to eat here anymore is way more important than the coffee. Okay, Ignis is not a coffee guy, he's more of a... more of a cafe dining. Always bitter. Ignis, in your case, wouldn't you actually die from drinking some? Huh? Why the hell would I die? I could die just from drinking coffee! Oh my! It could be fatal if you're unaware, Ignis. If you give dog <laughs> dogs coffee or onions- I guess he's a dog? Is that what they're implying? Yeah, coffee is bad for dogs. Uh, such food stuff induces poisoning symptoms in dogs, so it should never be fed to them yet. Coffee and like chocolate as well has kind of like the same effect as coffee. Like the caffeine is very toxic. Although sometimes you're kind of good with chocolate because <laughs> there's a lot of uh. It's very diluted, especially if it's milk chocolate. But of course, if you ever like had a dog and had them eat it, you probably had like a panic attack. Like my dog did that once. He uh, we left, we came back, and there was just a bunch of wrapping on the floor, and he opened up a, an entire box of C's candy, <laughs> and all of it was gone. And we're like, oh no! But luckily, he didn't like ingest that much. We like. We actually looked through the whole house. We were finding like pieces of candy stuffed in like couch cushions and in like closets. <laughs> and like we kind of reconstructed the C's candy box. And like, alright, all the pieces are there. You probably only got like a trace of them out inside him, so like you should be fine. And a lot of it's not even like pure chocolate. Anyway. God, just stop it. Stop calling me a dog, you angel nerd. Miser the Demon King, Canis the Knight, Ill the Fallen Angel, and Ignis the Demon Beast. After their fantasy ridden introductions, they chatted amongst themselves. Now then, how about it, Katone? Were they were we able to convey who we are to you? From the looks of them, it didn't seem like they were trying to trick me or tell me absurd lies about alternate worlds. Right. 
<laughs> I couldn't quite believe that. I'll try for now. I guess the correct answer is I'll try for now. Honestly, I don't even understand half of what you all are talking about. Anyway, none of you are normal people. But to my grandfather, you were all important customers, right? Yes, we do live outside the rules of man. It is not wrong to consider us abnormal. Okay, they will be not offended. Though, we'll never be able to know if Suwan really did care about us. I mean, if you were his customers, he probably cared. He'd let you in. He really did think of us that way. We are truly lucky to have known him. I don't know what sort of bond or what sort of time these men and grandpa spent together. But I couldn't help but notice Miser's smile was one of melancholy. At that point, Ignis and everyone took a seat nearby and showed that they were ready to have a serious chat with me. Well, you can decide if you trust us or not at a later time. More importantly, we'd like to know. What did you come here to do? What? His eyes squinted a bit more. It was silent. His sharp gaze was upon me, scanning every little detail. Like a beast. Yes, someone's granddaughter, Kotone Awaki. We've heard about you a bunch of times from the old man himself. Seems like he used to live in the shop, but you hadn't seen him in a while because work has been too busy. So, why are you here now, of all times? And what do you really think of, en of Enchante? Your answer is very important to us. I had a feeling that they also guessed as to why the granddaughter of the shop owners came. After the shop was abandoned for so long. And that meant Enchante was at a crossroads. Whether or not you'll, you're taking over the shop or closing it down... Miser spoke as if he read my mind. As if reacting to his somber smile. I hold out a letter towards them. The reason I came here is because of this letter I received from Grandpa. If I die, I leave this shop in your hands. So oh, he willed it to his granddaughter instead of his either daughter or son? I don't know. <laughs> Which of one of Kotone's parents are Grandpa's kid. Go there yourself and have a look around. If you feel you don't need it, sell it. Or you can feel free to make it to your own place. I don't know, it might be good for her. <laughs> If, uh, maybe the taxes are low, maybe got grandfathered in, like, a lower tax rate. But yeah, running a business is a little hard. <laughs> you, have to, you have to drum up business and take care of inventory and all that stuff. That's what the letter says. Lord Suwan's final request. I nod. My fingers graze a leaf of paper as if, as I look towards them again. You're right. I hadn't taken time to see Grandpa. But it's not because I didn't want to. I love him. He used to take care of me. If he knew I took advantage of his kindness to escape from my current problems, I'm sure he would have been sad. What do you mean, escape? Right, I didn't want my dear grandpa to hate me for leaving that place. But in the end, his passing is what brought me this letter and brought me here again. The fact that this had all been triggered for me to escape that place, that's the truth. No idea what you're talking about. I'm sure you're just imagining things. Suwan would never fuss over something so small. He'd laugh like an idiot and then move on. That'd be it. Ignis's words were tinged with sadness. Hearing them, I turned towards the others. 
Grandpa talked about how important this cafe always was to him. So, if there's any secrets to it, I'd like to know every detail. So, please, tell me. What exactly is this cafe? What are these alternate worlds? My question made them look at each other. The sound of the shop returned to what it must have been like before we arrived. Silent. It is difficult to describe in words. I can say that it is just as you have seen. This is Cafe Enchante. Here there is a gateway to other worlds, a place where others can come to visit. Alright, what, what is <laughs> a lot of dictionary terms here? Cafe Enchante. A cafe operated by the heroine's grandfather. Its true identity is a cafe that welcomes customers from other worlds. The heroine didn't know about this. Until she took over the cafe. And we got other world. Literally refers to mysterious worlds other than the one the heroine lives in. Existing in different space, time, and reason. While they seem to be products of fiction, they actually do exist. They do exist. Lord Sawan, keeper of Manchante, ran it and took us non-humans as guests. Non-humans. Well, the first, first definition of it. General term for those that aren't human. In this game, it can refer to anyone from another world. Alright. I guess that's a little bit easier. <laughs> so we don't have to, like, guess if they're beast man or angel or headless man. We can just call them all non-human. Just lump them all in one category. Yes, as that has been... Blech. Yes, that has long been the case here. A shop where distant worlds intersect. A place of fun. And a place of belonging. You know, you were still so small, so you wouldn't remember, huh? Hmm? Wait, did I meet you at some point in the past, Miser? It was such a short meeting after all. It isn't surprising that you don't remember. If that's the truth, had they already been coming to the cafe back when I was still living here as a child? I close my eyes and try to remember. Fragments of images begin to cross my mind. Events buried in my memory of these past 15 years begin to surface. Then the main reason I opened this place is all for the people. Of course, these memories are from when I was a child. It's difficult to recall them. But I don't think I ever considered then that the customers I saw weren't normal human beings. Now that they mentioned it, I feel something nagging at the back corners of my mind. These still fleeting fragmented memories slumbering within. And some, yes, some of them come from far away places beyond imagination. That's right. Grandpa was always so cheerful when he would talk about the guests that visit. It didn't matter if they were human or not. I probably just don't remember, but I'm certain Miser and the others would be in those memories. I guess it would be kind of hard to explain to a kid. <laughs> all these bizarre stories I'm hearing. I feel like I can believe them all just by recalling the heartfelt words of my grandpa. It's all true, isn't it? About other worlds, the non-humans. That grandpa kept this place open for all of you. Yeah, though so I think what proves it is the best <laughs> the best is our very existence. I also swear to this this to be the truth. I am a fallen angel, in and out, and have stayed at Enchante for a long time. This is why we believe this to be the most amazing cafe. Once one has passed, things will not be the same as they once were. Canis shakes his head with sullen movements. You all came to the shop from other worlds using that door, right? So, what happens if the shop was demolished? If the shop closed down and was demolished, I'm pretty sure the door wouldn't survive. Nothing really. As long as the door stays unlocked, we can come and go whenever we want. 
The lock? Look at the gate. You see the plate hung on the door, correct? The plate, I assumed, is the one that reads open and closed. Right. I see it, but that is the lock? It is odd that our lock is that plate. Gate lock refers to the sign plate of the Enchante gate. Turning it o turning it over locks and unlocks it. I mean, it's not, not a traditional lock, but symbolic lock. It just, just as it says, the door is open when it's open and it stays closed when it reads closed. As far as we know, it's just as Ignis says. We can come and go whenever we want, so as long as the lock stays open. So sometimes some unpleasant things might come through there, so I recommend only keeping it open or closed when necessary. Um, <laughs> are some uh, weird creatures gonna come through there? What unpleasant things? The kind who had destroyed the world. Those who think of others as lesser beings and murder them in cold blood. Oh, okay. That's it. That's too dangerous! Grandpa, how could you open this the shop without batting an eye? That kind of danger! Uh, by the way, you may be worried about what would happen to the door to the other worlds if the shop were to be demolished. But don't worry, the gate can't even be destroyed in the first place. So would they just knock over the whole building and all that would stand would be this like weird door? Ill and I have cast a spell on the cafe. It's not perfect, but it turns away anything that would seek to cause harm here. Okay, you put it over the whole building. In other wor words, it seems like the shop eluded demolition due to this mysterious power. I see. That's astounding. It does seem rather convenient. That- <laughs> that's all it does. You may not realize it, but there is a magic in effect all over the place. But if that's really the case, the shop could never disappear, isn't that right? The shop itself, certainly. This place remaining pleasant or not, well, that's another issue, isn't it? Yeah, you know, gotta have someone to run said cafe. <laughs> you can have, like, the building, but... Like, what about, like, the, the people and the food and the drinks? We'd like to stay here at this cafe, where Enchante's keepers would welcome us non-humans with open arms place where you feel welcome. Although, we do honestly realize how selfish it is to feel this way about it all. A silence once again drapes over the cafe as those words are uttered. While I was still searching for what to say, Miser suddenly stands up from his seat. Well, whatever the case, we do understand that all of this is very sudden. We'll leave you be for a while. All that I ask is that you mediate on this for a bit. Wait, but where are you going? All of us have rented rooms from Lord Suwan on Anchante's open floors. Considering it's been a while, we'd like to see them. Uh, you rented rooms? <laughs> Did you guys all live upstairs? <laughs> In- Alright, wait. <laughs> Indeed, we would visit frequently, sometimes staying overnight. We all had been paying to rent those spaces. I see. Come to think of it, Il did clearly mention he was living in the shop. It's true that I had yet to see the second floor of Enchante. I really would have never imagined that these non-human guests would be staying up there. Were they there when she was little? <laughs> I wonder. Hmm. Wait, so if the old man is dead, what happened to our rooms? They haven't been cleaned out, have they? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't been upstairs yet. I don't know if a housing authority or city officials have come to see the property. Th th that's very troubling. Il abruptly stands up. I have valuable treasures in my room. I could not stand if something happened. I cannot stand here idly. I must check at once if everything is okay. With that, Il rushes up the stairs in a huff. I think he might have flown a bit, even. What? What in the world? 
Leave him be. That's just how he is. This enchantment keeps away anyone that isn't affiliated with this place as it is. There's nothing to worry about. I'll go check on my room. Come in, Canis. Your room's by mine after all. Right. Though I do not have many belongings to check on, I shall at least tidy up a bit. As they begin to climb the stairs. All right, Kotone. You should think of, think this over for a while. Why don't you make yourself a cup of coffee? Miser, the last one to leave, winked at me as he spoke. After the sounds of their steps faded away, the space around me was hushed in comparison to how it was moments ago. But then, this would have been what Enchante would have been right now if those men hadn't arrived. People from other worlds, non humans, come here to this cafe, huh? Do like regular people come to? <laughs> they just hang out and talk, drink coffee. At first, I was wondering if I should even bother trying to run this cafe at all. Now as I sit here by myself, I'm beginning to question the very nature of reality. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird... Weird... that... <laughs> I, I couldn't imagine just like, oh, okay, I gotta go back to see Grandpa's place and think about if I want to run it. Now it's just like... Her whole world just come crashing down. I can't even think about running a business at the moment. Ugh. I need to gather my thoughts. Miser was considerate enough to let me have some time alone. Maybe I should go outside and get some air. Ah. I look to the horizon. The sun is setting. I take in its light and let out a sigh. The cold begins to grip me as the day ends. I sit on a bench and go over every... Go over everything that has just happened. I found that door. I got- <laughs> I, I got assaulted. I met Monsieur and the others. Danis, Ill, and Ignis. They all claim that they aren't human. All this is easily erasing whatever knowledge of the world I used to hold. Hmm. <laughs> Ow. I know it was cliche, but I pinched my cheek to make sure I could still feel it. I did, so that meant... This is all real. I pinched my elbow, my hand, but of course the result's the same. Sitting there, I take a breath deeper than the deepest ocean. Mmm, <sighs> <sighs> air. Seems like every guest grandpa rented to develop rented to develop a meaningful relation relationship friendship with him. I like how I just like put in relationship instead of friendship. This is a word association. The shop itself certainly this place remaining pleasant or not, well that's another issue, isn't it? We'd like to stay here at this cafe where Enchante's keeper would welcome us non humans with open arms. A flashback. If it's sepia tone, it's a flashback. Holding this irritable feeling. Ugh. Let out a groan. It was a sound no one would expect to come from someone like me. What do I do? The sunset. It's so pretty. <laughs> just, let's just look at the sky for a moment. Take it all in. But I can only escape my reality for so long. As if to try to find an answer, I open the letter from Grandpa once again. Who Kotone. I was originally just going to leave a message with you over social media. But I guess, but I guess that's not suitable for a will. They want me to write to you in a letter. Nice sentiment, but I prefer the keyboard. Oh, that's... Gramp Grandpa was high tech. Good job, Grandpa. <laughs> Honestly, he's all yeah. <laughs> he always loved breaking the mold. A bittersweet feeling draws a smile. I bite my lip it as I read over the letter again. An official will, an official will was delivered to my parents, so this is basically just a personal letter from grandfather to granddaughter. 
Most of the contents was just random chatter. Questions about me eating properly, making sure I was being nice to my parents, and I was doing okay at the company where I got my job, things like that. And Grandpa would come to the house every so often, and we had so much fun talking. Well, at least they still talked. I got like a little worried that like she just never saw a grandpa like after she was a kid. And that would be hard to have like he just never made time ever to see him. Like again. And then just he ended up passing before he could say anything. He was sensitive to how I felt. He never did try to pry too much to my daily life. I guess this letter. It helped him work through it all of that concern he must have had for me. I'm sorry, Grandpa. It's difficult to talk about it out loud. But the food supply company where I was hired was infamous for being strict about the work. That became apparent right away once I started my job there. Oh god, did she work at like a black company? <laughs> the sales department would go door to door selling health products and supplements that were basically scams. As an office worker, I dealt with all the complaints that came from customers each day and night. They brought me on right out of high school, even though I barely made the cut. So I forced myself to endure the labor. Oh, <laughs> they probably got you for cheap labor, most likely. But after so many days of working there, the ringing phone would trigger me. I could still hear my boss yelling. You can always be replaced. Just do as I say. You have nowhere else to go, do you? No one needs you. I picked you up, so you'd better be grateful. I was tired, bitter, and just wanted to quit. It was at that time when I got Grandpa's letter, which I'm looking at right now. If things get tough, you can always come back. This shop was an old man's hobby. But if it means something more to you too, then that's just fine. Your life is in your hands. You choose to live it exactly how you want. Grandpa! Sniff. I fold the letter and take a deep breath. There's no one here to guide me now. But still, I really hate that there isn't. I know I just want things to be easy. I think of what Grandpa would say, wishing that he were here right now. Hmm? Huh? I thought they went to check on their rooms. My face slips up at the doorbell ringing to see Miser standing there. Hmm. Well, I'm the only one who wasn't actually staying over at Anchante. I wasn't really renting a room either, so I was just kind of wandering around inside the cafe. But I did come to the cafe every day, though I did have my Demon King duties to attend to, so I usually left at night. Miser smiles, adding that he'd continue to come if I were to take over the shop. Then he comes to sit on the bench with me. Oh, I didn't expect that. I'm sure it's not as bad as ill, but I did imagine that you'd be living here too. <laughs> Do I look like that much of a mess? I actually thought I was like him. Ill is a mess? I couldn't really see that at all. More importantly, is it okay for you to look like that out here? No, don't worry. Demon kings have any number of ways to cheat. Fiddling with the consciousness is easy. <laughs> cheat, a favorite word of Miser. He often means something so strong it seems doubtful. He wraps up the strange things he performs with this world word, probably because explaining it is a pain to him. He's a demon king after all. While he can easily do most things, such as acts of destruction, there are a few things that he's not very good at. And then perception obstruction. Magic used by Miser on himself, since he would be seen as suspicious when he's outside. Apparently surrounding people only see him as wearing normal clothes, but why can't we see him as wearing normal clothes? <laughs> He stretched calmly, saying that scary fact. I wonder how detached from humanity he really was. I mean, just look at his clothes. His face, the way he talks, the way he laughs. Maybe he doesn't look that different yet. Double 
double check something. Okay, <laughs> I had to double check. Double check, uh, my software. Uh, oh, what were you thinking about? Sorry to interrupt when I, was, when I suggested that you do that. Oh, no, it's fine. Actually, in all honesty, it was helpful that he came to chat. Couldn't help but feel like thinking about this on my own would just be getting me down. Hey, is that a letter from Swan? As he pointed the letter, I realized I forgot to put it away. Oh, or... Yes, it is. I was holding it to my chest out of reflex, probably because it was taking me through all those memories and emotions just now. Responding ambivalently, he stares at the letter for a moment and then speaks. So, about Suwon... Did you know that he couldn't eat spicy stuff? <laughs> he had such a hard time with hot peppers. His sudden comment caught me off guard. Huh. I never knew. Grandpa always seems so sprightly. Right? It wasn't a quirk for show. He had issues with other things too, like cockroaches. <laughs> really? Well, I can't deal with cockroaches either. <laughs> Scared of bugs. Miser continued on, speaking kindly of the grandfather I didn't know. Though, I'm sure... It was a tiny bit of things he wanted to say. I could tell these memories were very precious to him. So on, he was pretty good at pouring coffee despite how much he didn't fuss with the intricate details of things. Yeah, it was only when he poured coffee, though only might be a bit mean, that he was so intentional and serious. Miser nods in, agree in agreement with my comment. Demon kings, knights, fallen angels, and beasts. While we were here, we were just guests. Ordering coffee and eating snacks. You can always just relax here. That sort of shop is... That's the sort of shop this is. That's why we love to be at this cafe. That's why we love Enchante. You're not gonna ask me, are you? To take over the cafe. Hmm? Well, yeah, I guess you're right. It's hard to put into words. It just wouldn't feel right. I mean, as, long as, as much as I'd like you to. Laughing a bit to himself, he stood up, looking satisfied somehow. Anyway, I know this is happening so fast. I'm sure it's hard to make a decision. After I nod in response, he pauses for a moment and then speaks again. Kotone, are you doing anything tomorrow? I remember what Sawan told me. You work northeast from here, don't you? Are you going to go home already? Tomorrow? I don't have anything planned. As for work... <laughs> I don't know if you want to go back, girl. Katone? Oh, uh, right. Yeah, I don't have anything planned. I see. Then how about you come back here? To Enchante? Yeah. We don't mind, of course. If you have the time, I'd like to talk with you some more, but not necessar necessarily about the cafe. I want to know more about you, and I'd like you to get to know me a little bit better, too. Miser gave me a smile that did not look at all suspicious, and it was actually friendly. I haven't been asked a question like that in a while, outside of a family context, anyway. I put up my guard and reflex and pro probed him. And why would you want to do that? Because this meeting was destiny, of course. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Even if it was a joke, he had the guts to mention something as cheesy as destiny, and him saying it with a, such a carefree smile brought a smile to my face as well. Yeah, it's probably just that this is destiny considering it would be impossible for a normal person to meet a demon king. Oh, you finally believe that I'm a demon king. Well, I wouldn't get anywhere if I didn't. <laughs> So you're compromising then, hmm? 
If you're still suspicious, I can show you evidence that would change your mind. Evidence? Is he gonna cast a spell? Hmm. What if I were to romantically... I can't, hey, dude. <laughs> you could just, like, cast a spell or something. Break the sun into pieces! Or remove the stars from the sky without a trace! Oh. H how, how romantic. <laughs> I could do that much if you were to ask me directly, you know. I think we might need the sun, though. Uh, I'm just saying. Is that romantic? His smile scares me as if to say that he would actually go through with that. Uh, well, with that in mind, I'll be waiting for you at the cafe tomorrow. But I'm not the one who should be saying that. I'll think about it. I'll consider whether or not I'll return. Even I, if I were to start heading back now, I'd be home around midnight. Considering how dangerous that might be, maybe it's better I stay here tonight. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Would you, like, go back on that train and, like, go all the way back home? They have, like, a bunch of bedrooms here. But I am a bit reluctant to stay at Enchante with all these people I don't even know. For now, I let Miser know that I'll be leaving to get a hotel for the night. Okay. Hope you have enough money, girl. Okay, got it. I'll let everyone else know. Will everyone be okay with the lock? Ellen Canis will stay behind, so it's okay. You can leave the gates to me, too. Alright then, Katone. See you tomorrow. Right. See you tomorrow. Oh. Hmm? What's wrong? Oh, no. It's, it's nothing, really. I haven't said see you tomorrow to anyone in such a long time. It really was nothing. Outside of work, I didn't seem to live the same way as other people did. Miser didn't make me feel weird, and he replied shyly. Heh, <laughs> me too. He smiled with an endless kindness. For, for a demon king, he sure is nice. It was then I realized that I was no longer just considering coming back tomorrow. Once I got to the hotel, the promise I made to see Miser became rather clear. The hotel I was able to find was very nice, considering how little it cost. After taking a shower and changing, I lie down on the bed in the room. I'm so tired. It's definitely due to mental stress. It's time I get to sleep. I let out a yawn as they reach out to, to the light by the pillow. No matter how many times I think about it, i am just really just experienced something insane. Though I no longer thought it was a dream. Still feeling the small morsel of excitement towards visiting Enchante tomorrow. I close my eyes and give in to sleep. I hear a voice. Sounds like a child. Someone crying. Oh god. <laughs> What the? That kind of scared me. Solitude is lonely. What is this? What is this nightmare? Hmm? My mind was blank and I have no idea where I was or when this was. Oh god. <laughs> Let's try a voice for this. Uh this is a scary nightmare. I have been A person appeared without a sound and stretched out their hand. Oh, wait, that's Miser's hand. Their trembling fingers sank into my chest. They literally sank in. Then they plunged in. Like a hand submerging into water. <laughs> my heart felt like an alarm going off. My body shook in pain. Unable to breathe. I could feel my consciousness slipping. 
But there is something more harrowing. It clung on to me. This unknown plea rang in my head. It was so pitiful. So sad. I tried batting away the hand, but I just couldn't no matter how hard I tried. That was... concerning. <laughs> what? I woke up to the sound of my heavy heartbeat. It took me a moment to realize the space around me was just the hotel room that I had booked for the evening. I don't remember everything very well. But that definitely felt like a nightmare. In an attempt to dig up the memories from it, I grabbed the sides of my head. Hmm? Just then, the alarm goes off. I look at the time on the clock. It's already this late? I have to hurry or I'll miss checkout. I fling myself up from the bed and start to get ready for the day. I rush through checking out of my room and leave the hotel quickly. My feet were moving on their own, making their way towards Anchante. Though I inadvertently made Miser a promise. I actually began to feel a little excitement to go back there again. Did that dream not like set off alarm bells? I didn't have a solid conversation with each guest yesterday. I need to do that today. Conversation about things that don't necessarily have to do with Anchante. Okay, well, see how it goes. I was hoping for a fresh start today. Especially after my terrible dream. And I was walking along when all of a sudden... I heard a clack. So I'm a little up ahead. Something appeared. It bounced once, twice. It was rolling towards me from the street. Curious about what it was, I bent down to the ground to pick it up off the ground. A pen? It didn't seem like a regular pen from a department store. Beneath the navy surface of it were a set of initials engraved in brilliant gold. This must have been custom made. Oh, my apologies, young lady, but that belongs to me. Thank you for picking it up. Who is this? I look towards the person whose initials must be the ones found on this pen. Hey, there he is. Last boy. Yeah, right, right? He's on the cover. <laughs> Yeah, he's on the cover. I'm not wondering where that guy was. <laughs> I was like, we've been playing for so long. Uh, hmm. Well, he looks kind of like a dapper fellow. Over here. Sorry, the car is already running. Would you please bring it over here? Huh? Oh, sure. The man was wearing a casual suit, and as he looked in my direction, like a businessman. Business suit. I walked towards him, brushing some of the dirt that I got on the pen. I hand it over and he gives me a smile. Ah, uh, thank you. I was writing a note and it slipped. I'm just glad it didn't roll into the sewer. No problem. It's a beautiful pen. I hope it didn't get scuffed. I was about to say goodbye when... Miss, can I ask you a personal question? What is it? I'm not from around here, and I don't know the streets very well. Oh, but I'm not asking for directions. I just, well, I said it already, didn't I? I want to ask you something personal. Oh, okay, you gonna ask me on a date? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Right. I feel bad that you're standing there. Can we go to a cafe? Maybe one nearby? I'd be happy to treat you to something. Consider it... Thanks for returning my pen. What do I do? This is about to be one of those instances of coercion that I'm, that I'm always hearing about. I need to find a way to get out of this. I'm sorry, I appreciate the offer, but I have a few things I need to take care of. Oh, that's unfortunate. What things, if you don't mind me asking? Do they have to do with Cafe Enchante? Where the Demon King and Fallen Angel hang? Huh? Now he had my attention. H how do you know that? Was this person like Miser and the others? Haha, <laughs> thank you for the honest reaction. I'm sorry I didn't mean to startle you. Not anyone to be suspicious of, okay? 
Kotone Awaki. Uh, how do you know my name? That's very, very suspicious. <laughs> Just so you know, I was acquaintance of your grandfather's. Another regular at Enchante. You knew my grandpa, and you somehow knew how who I was and how I looked. Did grandpa share photos? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Allow me to introduce myself. Kaori Rindo. My name is Kaori Rindo. And so you know I'm just an ordinary human, okay? Alright. Just <laughs> not the f I guess he's he's the normal boy option out of all these all these special boys. Mr. Rindo. A regular at Enchante. Let down my guard after he mentioned he was human, but only a little bit. Hmm. I didn't even know my name. Agnes and the others didn't know who I was before hearing me say my name. I'm sure he could tell how guarded I was when he looked into my eyes. Not seeming to care much about that, Rindo continued speaking rather casually. I've heard rumors about you, about Suwon. Did you come here to take over Enchante? Well, no, I hadn't decided on that yet. Yet, huh? Though, just by looking at you, I can tell you've already been influenced. Hmm, this is beginning to be annoying. Annoying? Hmm? Oh, I'm talking about those non-humans at Enchante. I know I'm a stranger and you'll probably find me suspicious, but let me warn you. Don't take over that place, okay? And why is that? The reason is very simple. Those non-humans are the very essence of danger. Rindo spoke without any ill will, but also without a fragment of restraint. One of them aside, they all appear to be normal at first glance. They can hold conversations just fine, but... In the end, it's all for show. They're entirely different from human beings. I didn't know Kaoru was talking. They're freaks in nature's- in human clothing, beyond the reaches of what is considered normal. Monsters, creatures, evil spirits, that's not nice. <laughs> I'd be worried to send such a sweet girl like you to a place where such creatures gather. My grandpa seemed to be okay, unless he was off by one of them, but... I began to feel a little angry at the things this man was saying. I don't know everything about them, but they were guests of my grandfather's, and I know they were people he truly valued. I wish this man wouldn't say anything so bold as to contest that fact. Excuse me? I began to protest, but was interrupted. Oh, I'm getting a call from my subordinate. Sorry to keep you for so long. I have to get back to work now. Goodbye, then, Katone. If you do decide to stay there, I suppose we might meet again soon, hmm? Bye. <laughs> Monopolizing the conversation once again, he then disappears. <laughs> I didn't get to reply. He didn't seem to think highly of Enchante, considering he was a regular there. Right. It would be best to talk this through with Miser and the others. I decided to cut my ruminations there and... Hurry along the road to Enchante. Before I enter, I pinch my cheek again, just to make sure. With Kaoru Rindo and that confrontation just now, I decided to accept yesterday's reality. But still, I was nervous about going inside. I walked to the door and grabbed the doorknob. Hello? Not knowing if I needed to, I let the cafe know that I'm here by taking a step inside. Huh? I thought for a moment that I stepped into a completely different shop. I look around in a panic, but the door did look the same, like the same one I saw yesterday. What? <laughs> this is not... This is not the inside. This is the outside. However, what I saw was not what you call a regular shop at all. What was laid out before me appeared to be an entire world. A gentle light forth to the heavens. Beautiful plants I had never seen before embraced the light, stretching their leaves to the sky. This scene before me could only be described as an illusion. 
not at all part of reality. The only things I can consider normal here were a few dishes on a large table. <laughs> Got some tea there. I don't know, that soda. Hmm. As I stirred, confused, the person who walked up to me, unfazed by everything around me, was... Oh! Miser! Oh, hey, welcome! Hmm? Or in your case, I guess I should be saying, welcome back. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. I'm glad to see you again, Katone. Oh! It's nice to see you again, too. But more importantly, what's all this? Oh, this? Bill and I went out to prepare this special place for the tea party. Nice, hmm? We wanted to have a welcome party for you. Might be a goodbye party, depending on what you decide, but would that be okay, too? Oh, I see. Well, thank you for preparing all of... Wait, no. You haven't explained a thing. What is this place? You can think of it as an illusion. There's no need to worry. You haven't been sent to another world or anything like that. We are definitely still inside Enchante. Ill appears explaining things casually as I stare up at the endless sky. Huh. Well, that's something you can do, too. I tried touching a few leaves of grass, and they felt real. Hmm. <laughs> I felt myself smile for some reason. My curiosity began to win over my surprise at this sur surrealistic scene. Is something the matter? Is something bothering you? Huh? Oh no, I'm fine. It's nothing. By the way... Where are the other two? I changed the subject to talk about the others. Ah, uh, those two have been over there. They've been at the table for a little while. I head over to the table led my miser, and there I find... Oh, hi. <laughs> ah, you've come. I am most pleased to see you again, Katone. <laughs> he has nothing to say. The friendly Canis and the seemingly irri irritated Ignis come to greet me. Ignis is looking in every direction but mine, so I'm not sure how much of a greeting it is. He's just shy. He looks upset, but I didn't think I could be the issue, especially considering I was so new to the cafe. Um, Ignis, did something happen? Oh, well, yeah, I guess we just had an annoying customer come by a little while before you arrived. They were so annoying, I just beat them up and ran them out of the shop. Wait, you beat them up? A customer? For a business in the service industry to do something like that could be fatal. Hmm, how should we explain this? It's quite alright, Katone. Although they were guests of the shop, it was perfectly permissible to beat them up. Does such a guest even exist? Well, let's just forget about that for now. Please have a seat, my princess. Huh? Uh, thank you? Hesitantly, I sit on the chair miser brought. A cup of aromatic tea is set before me. So here we are again. Thank you for coming today, Katone. He grins and I feel myself getting tense. Um... I'd like to thank you as well for inviting me. Hell, I didn't even think you'd show up, considering how suspicious of, you, of us you were. I apologize about that. I cleared up some things with Miser after meeting everyone. For now, at least I've come to believe everything about all of you. I noticed Ignis looking away in a pout. I hadn't gotten to speak with anyone individually aside from Miser. It's understandable that the others might not like that too much. I lower my head towards them. Also, I apologize about yesterday. I left before finishing our conversation. There's no need to worry. In fact, we were the ones who decided to leave prematurely. Besides, you did come back to visit. That alone is more than enough for us. Miser laughs nervously at Ignis's demeanor before he begins to speak. Anyway, aside from the talk about Enchante, I'm always happy to chat with you, Katone. 
I'm sorry we can't provide much hospitality, but I hope this could be nice for you. So nothing in particular was leading it. The tea party began calmly. Though for a tea party, aside from snacks, there are mostly heavy dishes on the table. Huh. Got some uh, karage. Uh, that looks maybe like a pork cutlet over there. <laughs> some chips. I don't know, a bag of peanuts. Wow, did you make all this? No, not really. It's all from a convenience store nearby. Huh? It's been so long since any of us has cooked. We're afraid that we set the place on fire. That would be the last thing we need now. So Ignis and Canis went shopping for us at the convenience store. The convenience store? By convenience store, do you mean a normal, actual convenience store, right? What else could we mean? Well, Ignis would have been fine, but you went too, Canis? Indeed, there was much to carry. Did it go okay? The... The weight was not at all an issue. I could have carried it all in one hand. No, that's not what I'm worried about. He gets noticed. That's if that's what you mean. Of course. I had a bad feeling and started looking at the social media, knowing how it was so ingrained into occurrences like these in today's world. Helmet, store, suspicious person were things I typed in the search bars. Oh well, there hasn't been anything posted about anything. Thank goodness. <laughs> Don't worry. We always take appropriate measures. Outsiders like us could be in trouble if we don't keep in touch with the times. My powers as Demon King comes in handy. Powers as Demon King, huh? Right. Also, add a bit of Fallen Angel power to that and you get the most powerful combination you could have working together. Mr. Nods with confidence. I guess their powers really are that great if they're even able to manipulate social media. Now that I think about it, I'd only really spoken with Miser. I had no idea what sort of people the others were and the kinds of things that they were capable of. I'm curious about what their relationship with Grandpa was. Is it time to chat? Alright, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about Canis. <laughs> like, to be honest, I, I am very scared towards, towards Helmet Man. Let's talk to Canis. Um, Canis? What is it? I'm not sure if it was his body or helmet that made his presence so suffocating. Canis, um, you mentioned that you're a knight, but what exactly does that entail? Uh, well... Canis was halfway through a cookie when he was eating <laughs> and bringing it to his helmet. Then it just disappears. Huh? Wait, what? What just happened? Was that some kind of magic? Maybe it was more of Miser's strange powers. I was completely fixated on what just happened on his hand. And so that about explains it all. I do hope I make enough sense. Huh? Oh! We're so distracted by the cookie. <laughs> Canis' explanation about himself went in one ear and out the other. It sounded so accomplished at the end there, I can't bring myself to ask him again. Uh, yes. I just told him that it made sense to me. We don't get to learn about him, but still, how does he actually eat me while he has a helmet on? I felt like I learned uh, who he was, kind of. <laughs> that was it. I didn't get this. <laughs> I didn't get to the find. I guess we can talk to the other ones. Let's talk to let's talk to Ill. Um, Ill. What is it? You mentioned that you were a fallen angel, but how did you end up coming here to Enchante and meeting Grandpa? Let me think. How should I explain? In my case, I was saved by him. That may be the easiest explanation. 
saved by him. I try to ask for more details. Hey, Il, pass me the chicken. You don't really like meat, right? Here, I'll trade you for some of my cake. Oh, you are quite right. I do prefer sweets to meat. Thank you very much, Miser. W would chicken kind of remind him of himself because he has wings? <laughs> Hold on, Bill, is that coffee? Did you bring their own cup? Don't overdo it. Here, have this juice. Well, it's not as if I can't drink coffee. I suppose I do prefer juice, though. On top of that, his plates and utensils were cleared and the food was served to him. Miser and Canis were quickly watching Ill. Ill simply smiled and ex <laughs> accepting their off their efforts. Are they just taking care of him? <laughs> He's happy about it. What is this feeling? This aura, his entire body radiates. It makes you feel like he can't just be left alone. He's almost like a baby bird. You can't help but want to care for him. Ill, are you serious? <laughs> Not all embarrassed to be like this in front of a girl that you only just met? This is not the first time we have met. This is actually the second. I know that already. That's the same same thing, you moron. Try to eat by yourself at least, Ugh. Hmm. Um, Ill, would you like some of my strawberry cake? We're doing it too. <laughs> Don't you start doting on him too. Huh? Oh no, my body just moved on its own. We must serve the angel. I felt like I learned who he was. Kind of? Alright. Last is Ignis. Um, Ignis? What's it to you? Rude. Um, er... You have quite the appetite, don't you? He had a huge portion of food in front of him, and he was clearly eating more than the others. It reminded me of the people in high school, like on soccer or baseball teams, who would just pile on food like this in the cafeteria. So what? I can't eat? N no, that's not what I'm saying at all. I get that he eats a lot. That's how he reacts to small talk. We probably can't have a real conversation. Ugh, I'm not sure if I can talk to any of them. <laughs> that's how things usually go. Are humans any better at conversation? That depends. There <laughs> Is that really all that was? Maybe there are just different values at play here than among humans. Hmm, well, I'm not so sure about that. Values different from person to person, sure. But non-humans aren't much different when compared to humanity as a whole. Huh? If I am to borrow the words of another... The legends of old, the demon and spirits of worlds depicted in fairy tales become legends of the land. I cannot say this is always the case, but earthly phenomena dealing with ghosts or deities likely has to do with non-humans. Angels, demons, Mill and Miser are perfect examples of those. Oh, so does that mean the presence of you all spills from your worlds out into this one? It is really a possibility. There is no evidence to it after all. So that's that. Humans and non-humans have coexisted in fairly close proximity since the old times. I see. Think of it, all the images of ghosts and creatures I've seen over the years. Putting aside if they're real or not, people recognize them at least a little considering how often they show up on TV. Miser might actually be right. Non-humans might be closer to us than we think. But I suppose it's a different thing entirely to actually running into these sorts of things in person. Is that all you wanted to talk about? Oh no, there's one more thing. I want to hear all of your relationships with my with my grandpa one more time. Huh? We told you before, we're regulars here and... No, Ignis, that's not what she's asking. I suspect. The relationships between us and Sawan. He desires to know how deep they went. 
Yes! Right. I really want to take my time and speak with everyone individually. Ask again in greater detail what they thought about Grandpa. Maya's and the others look at each other and nod. They all begin to speak in turn. We're all different in our standing here and it's difficult to explain, explain things in detail. However, as we said before, we all feel that Sawan and this place are one of a kind. Indeed, he understood us well. We all found his friendship was invaluable. Yes, without Sawan, I'm positive that none of us would even be here. <laughs> the old man we're talking about. I thought he might have been here another century. <laughs> That's asking a lot for a human. <laughs> the four of them just glance at the same empty seat, hoping to catch a glimpse of the shadow of their old friend. I began to understand why they are so fond of my grandfather in this cafe. One of a kind. Invaluable. Of course they'd want to protect this place, the place that these people needed. The ones who thought so fondly of you. Hmm. Thank you. That's all I needed to hear. That's what they thought of him. Felt so proud knowing this person they admired was my own grandfather. I heard the dull thud of anxiety I held in my heart towards these men falling out of my body and onto the ground. Though the air filled with a solemn pause, the party continued. Huh? The hell, we ran out of drinks. Ignis tosses the empty bottle, once filled with a carbonated beverage, glancing around the room with an upset look on his face. I looked around as well, but it seemed that we were all out of other drinks too. Huh? The coffee's all gone too. Guess we really did have, didn't have enough, huh? Oh, well, then let me go get some more. No, you are our guest. Please relax, and I shall go in. No, that's exactly why I should go. You've all been treating me so very nicely. I wouldn't feel right if I didn't return the favor somehow. Did you find something about a reception not to your liking? No, it's not, that's not it. In any case, if she says she'll go, I say we let her. Think it'd make her happy to do it anyway. I suppose you're right. Okay, Katone. It's alright. Could you get more drinks? Yes, it would be my pleasure. I asked everyone what they would like to drink and I head outside. With just one step, the senior around me suddenly reverted to what it was <laughs> to what was everyday reality. I know I've been ex I've experienced it before, but that really is so amazing. I look back. My gaze fixes itself on the ordinary-looking Café Enchante. Grandpa's Café. To think that this place non-humans visited. This Café holds such an amazing secret. More than that, it's always been a special beloved place for those guests in particular. I'm sure I'll... Oh, first I have to go do some shopping. I was certain that I'd have enough time to ponder these feelings inside after I did that. I focus myself on the present moment and try to remember the directions to the nearby convenience store when... Hmm? I notice several cars all painted black parked in front of Anchante. I don't think parking is allowed there. I had a bad feeling about this before I can get past the cars. person got out of the car closest to me. It was a man whose fitted suit gave off a sense that he had no time to mess around. That suit, have I seen it somewhere before today? Hello. Excuse me, you're Katone Awake, correct? Yes, and who are you? Suspicious man in Fedora? Allow me to introduce myself. He hands me a business card. Nervously, I take it and read what it says. Government Paranormalism Measures. I've never heard of this company. 
Government paranormalism measures, otherwise known as GPM. We are a government agency that deals with phenomena outside the realm of science. GPM, a government agency that single-handedly deals with non-humans. The acronym stands for Government Paranormalism Measures. Okay, we just learned that. Our main areas of interest are strange powers and supernatural abilities, and also non-humans who can harm the human world. What? <laughs> Supernatural phenomena? Non-humans? After the surprise, it took me a moment to realize why they are talking to me about it. This is about Miser and the others. These people also knew me by name. A government agency of involved is a lot for me to take in. Now then, please take this. Unconcerned with the flush look on my face, the GPM agent took out an envelope and shoved it towards me. Um, what is this? It's from the Office of Public Affairs, a purchase offer with all documentation. What? Your parents were recently made owners of this building and the land it stands on. You'll contact them and explain what's going on without mentioning the non-humans. You can't tell me what to do! Considering this year's capital gains, a special subsidy can be offered to them. For more details... Wait a moment. What's the problem? It's that I don't know what's going on. Why are we talking about a purchase offer? What makes you think you can just talk? We have a misunderstanding, but let me assure you, you have no say in this matter. Excuse me. Grandpa said. A cold glance pierced through me. The lack of care in his words intimidated me. I feel a shiver run down my spine. That section chief, he came in contact with you, but he didn't explain a damn thing. So allow me. I'll be the one to tell you that any lie you attempt to fabricate here will be pointless. We are already aware that you are in contact with the non-humans at this location. Of course, we know that you're in the middle of deciding whether or not to take the cafe. Our concerns with this cafe lie not only with the non-humans who live there, but with the gate inside the cafe as well. A gate that connects other worlds to our own is far more perilous than you can imagine. I'm already aware of that. I know there are dangerous beings out there that could possibly come to the gate. No, it really isn't that simple. Completely disregarding my words, the official began to challenge me. This world coming in contact with others. Words with... Worlds with different laws of nature and types of life forms. It's a complex situation. It's a problem, considering the consequences when explorers discover new continents. It continued to rattle on monotonously as if reading something from a manual. Oh, hello. Images, indeed. The existence, existence of alternate worlds and their non-human inhabitants wasn't inherently bad. However, a mountain of worries could form if we were to come in contact with them. Okay. I'm guessing... I'm guessing top left is probably demon. Demon worlds has like a throne. I'm guessing bottom left is heaven. <laughs> the pearly gates. Uh, I'm not sure where the other two are though. For example, if bacteria native to these worlds came to our own, it could potentially cause diseases uncurable by modern science. We could be on the cusp of an awful pandemic. So. It feels pretty dangerous thinking about the very possibility of that, doesn't it? Though, what we are most interested in are the natural resources that might be in these worlds. Oh, okay. Well, that's... <laughs> you just wanna... You just wanna, um... Colonize it? Um... Uh, <laughs> and just farm resources? Unknown materials. Unknown resources. Imagine if there was a world that had gold or silver lying around as common rocks. Trade with that world could throw the global, global economy here into chaos. There was wars to consider too. Rising tensions between countries hoarding resources and those that desire them. After the GPM, GPM agent finishes talking about these terrifying cases, he glares at me. A door that leads to other worlds is too much to handle for one individual. So, you want me to just tell my parents to hand everything over to you and just walk away? Yes, I'm glad you understand. This is for your own safety as well. Can I ask you one question? Go ahead. If 
Everything's handed over to the GPM. What will happen to the cafe? The higher-ups would discuss the details, but everything would be under supervision. The gate's impossible to destroy or move, so the cafe would be demolished and a facility would be built around it. I see. I'm very glad this makes sense to you. Now if you'll review the documents and... I wave away the paper as he tries to give me. And a stunned look slowly appears on his face as I quietly told him the following. Given that information, I refuse. I'd like you to leave the premises now. What? What's the meaning of this? Don't you understand how dangerous that gate is, given everything I just told you? His face twists in anger, and the GPM agent begins to raise his hand towards me. And the next- the very next moment... Got Canis! Halt! Er. Out of nowhere, another arm appeared just in time to grab the agent's hand. Canis! What is this music? <laughs> Yeah, let's fight! I did not expect you to, you to return to talk, especially after what Ignis did to you. Who are you? Well, if you must ask, we are the ones you enjoy referring to as dangerous non-humans. How long have you guys been standing there? Huh? They're different from the other ones. Wait. Even though you're with the GPM, you don't know who we are. Are you a newbie or something? Well, that doesn't really matter. They're all just nuisances to us either way. Following Canis, the other three, three step forward to protect me. The agent brushed off Canis' hand, timid at the arrival of the group. Yeah, <laughs> okay, Canis. You have just made a number of statements just now. But in essence, all you desire is to have control of the gate within the Chante. What? Don't worry, little underling. Most of what you're saying is true. We have- we understand the dangers of the gate, too. That said, aren't you making this chat a little bit too convenient for your case? I look at the agent, a fearful expression now sprawled upon his face. Everyone here has already informed me. Non-humans have lived in the shadows of society for a very long time now. So that means gates like this have been around for quite a while too, right? Well... Ill answered my question for the stuttering agent. It is true that this gate is dangerous, however, since the old times it is true that others like it exist in the world. To imply the destruction of the world will begin with this particular gate. That is a bit misleading, I would think. Furthermore, if it were indeed that effect, the human world would already be have, were, already would have been destroyed, would you not think so? After being berated by questions, the agent straightens his posture and speaks once more. Perhaps it was a bit misleading. However, our view of the matter is the same. Gates and non-humans are the responsibility of the government, not an individual. We'd like a peaceful resolution to this. What's so wrong with handing the cafe to us? Tch, your peaceful resolution has to involve bullying a helpless girl, right? Or better yet, blocking off the area with armed guards, attempting to coerce her. Is that what peaceful looks like to you? What? They really noticed. Well, you know, Ignis did fight some of them. You had to know this would happen, right? Oh! The guests he fought with before were just people from the GPM, then. The agent lets out a childish grunt as Ignis stares him down. If that's the case. <laughs> I don't like to say. I guess, I guess it would have been too much to make each one. <laughs> Give each one a portrait. Several men in GPM uniforms came rushing from the surrounding roads all at once. Quite a few of them. Ha! Huh. They should have come by from the get-go. This could have been taken care of already. Hmm. They're eager, but they're not coordinated. 
He's likely not in charge this time. He? Another regular at Enchante. A human who also works for the GPM. Huh? Could that be? I had completely forgotten to ask about him, but I thought it might be. <laughs> just because you got your non-human buddies together doesn't change a thing. We can't just turn a blind eye to a gate that isn't under our control. Therefore, oh god, he has a gun. <laughs> we will take the cafe by force. Hello. Um, that sure escalated quickly. <laughs> With this signal, the other agents ready their raw, intimidating metal objects. Um, are you just gonna shoot the girl? She got willed this cafe by her grandpa. What do you think her parents will think? Weapons normally banned within Japan. Guns. I don't know how much. I don't know much about guns, but I could guess that these weren't just for show. They were real weapons meant to kill people. With the power of life and death in their hands. I felt sweat pour over my entire body as they pointed their weapons at me. Gotone, it'll be alright. How do you mean? Don't you see the guns? They have guns! It'll be fine. These are these agents are trained to deal with non-humans. Those guns aren't ordinary ones. Oh, are they like tranquilizers? No, their barrels are longer and designed to pierce through things since non-humans are usually tougher than humans. If that's true, how can you just tell me that it's gonna be fine? Do not worry, Kotone. You do not want to be hit. Avoid them, but if you get hit, it is of no consequence, but... I'm sorry, I have no idea what you mean. No normal person can just do that. <laughs> just but a flesh wound. I mean... Why are they all so carefree at the fact that we're completely surrounded by loaded guns? Humph. <laughs> Act as tough as you want. Sure, you non-humans are tough as they come. But what would happen if a stray bullet hit someone who wasn't a non-human? You can imagine, can't you? Oh dear, aren't you all government workers? Would you really harm one of your citizens? Humph. <laughs> you put way too much faith in government. We can do anything that we want with you. <laughs> All right, a corrupt government agency here. Not even just being very on the nose about it. This is your final warrant warning. I order you to stop resisting and oh, <laughs> resisting, huh? You mean like this? Gah! <laughs> Agent B, it's hot. All of a sudden, the firearms held by the GPN agents were glowing red. You can hear their hands begin to sizzle and their guns drop to the floor. Ignis watches, shrugging with a wry smile spread across his face. Oh, oh, he's going, he's going beast mode. Oh, I guess we're lucky no rounds went off. Tricky to heat stuff up precisely, you know. That form, he's from Bestia, the beast world. Yep. If you know about Bestia, then I'm sure you know about how things work there, eh? The strong live, the weak die, so basically. If you're stepping up to me like this, then you must be ready to die! As Ignis howls, wild flames begin to envelop his entire body. He looks the same as when I first met him. As he cheerfully jumps into the crowd of guns pointed directly at him. Oh, okay, we're, we're punching, we're fighting. We have fire. Come on! Hope you're ready to- you're ready to struggle, punks. I'll give you a punch if you can shoot me. Jumping in the swarm of agents, he grabbed, punched, kicked, and trampled over every enemy. Wow! People are just flying all over the place! Wow! What did he mean when he said you'd give them a punch? I am not certain myself, considering it came from Ignis, I am doubtful that he had any significant meaning. Damn it! What is this guy? We never face a non-human like this! This guy's a monster! There- Oh, more guns. Leaving Ignis to rampage, the other agents aim their guns at us, pulling the trigger! Oh. Oh, hello! 
He has a sword! All their bullets fell to the ground due to the giant sword Canis pulled out of thin air. You all require more training. Agents of the GPM, it would be wise to stop right there. I cannot guarantee that Canis would hold back against you. <laughs> That's a fair assessment, yeah? Besides Ill, who looked there peacefully. Like magic with a single finger. Miser stops a bullet from coming from another direction and allows it to fall to the ground. All I could do was just stand there. Dumbfounded as a whirlwind of supernatural phenomena swirled around the space right in front of me. What now? If it's a good thrashing you desire, I can help you achieve such a thing. That is, if you feel these men are worthy enough warriors to engage in battle today. I am the Black Knight of Medio, the fairy world. My name is Canis Expada. How about you? As Canis stood there intimidating the Lion of Agents and sta standing before him, an agent Ignis flung into the air came flying towards Canis, crashing down upon him. <laughs> that was, that's uh, Canis. With all the weight, Canis's helmet. No, his entire head came off. Oh, it's on the floor. I saw it. What? <laughs> the commotion around us vanished. That moment everyone there, friend or foe, stood in silence as they stared his, at his head, rolling across the ground. Uh, <laughs> he's the, okay, he has a dual hand. I'm getting so... He doesn't really need the helmet. Ignis, please do be more aware of your surroundings. The GPM agents and Katone. Ah! A shock in the form of a shout rose up from us as Canis lifts himself up and straightens his collar, as which was devoid of anything. <laughs> I like how the agents were like surprised too. Don't is isn't this your job to deal with like supernatural stuff? Like, probably like this should be over your head at this point. Like. Probably normal for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> you should watch where you're going, Canis. We got a dictionary term. Canis Espada, number one. A young man shrouded in mystery whose face is covered by a helmet. His true identity is a headless knight. This is sometimes called a Dullahan. I suppose you have a point. Anyway. Horses in the GPM, if you do not fear my sword, then come at me. I like. I like how his flame changes since he doesn't have a face. So like they can't do different facial expressions. They just they go around that by just changing his fire color. This otherworldly battle continues. Whoops! I mashed A too much. I was bewildered by everything going on about me as Miser placed his hand on my shoulder. Hmm, I see. Kotone, that was your first- Hmm, <laughs> I see. Kotone, was that your first time seeing Canis like that? Eh, you'll get used to it. Will I, though? I suddenly noticed that out of the many GPM agents that arrived here, half of them were lying on the ground. It didn't seem like any of them had sustained any serious injuries. Still, it was a disaster zone. Now then, why don't you just give up already? Don't you realize by now that any attempt on us or Enchante is a dangerous idea? By the way, the fallen angel loafing here doing nothing could take you on all, all on easily. I wouldn't recommend going for him either. I do not like violence. But if you do not leave, I will have no other choice than to use force. Bill tilts his head, signaling his reluctance. I couldn't quite imagine him being just as strong as Ignis or any of the others, though. A fallen angel? No way! 
We can't leave a non-human like that here. Now that we know what he is. He's more dangerous than any non-human. There's no way we could leave all you under the control of this helpless girl. Well, if you worried worried about the fallen angel, uh, let me introduce you to the demon king. I think you misunderstand. I deny his statement and reflex. Many of the angels were already wounded. My voice could easily be heard now that the scene around me was nearing its end. I took one deep breath. I wanted to be sure that they could hear my words. I will not be able to control them. In fact, I have no desire to do so. In that case, please. More importantly, control is the last thing I would ever want here in, in the first place. The eyes and attention of everyone there, in this brief moment, it was all directed towards me. Miser and the others with the GPM agents paid close attention to me as I spoke. I... I begin to vocalize the conclusion I had already come to in my mind. It had come from my own mouth, otherwise it would have no meaning at all. I spoke with Misers and the others, and I've come to understand them a little better. Although they're considered non-humans, there's more we have in common than not. However, as we said, we all believe that someone in this place are one of a kind. Indeed, he understood us well. We all found this friendship was invaluable. Yes, without Sawan, I'm positive that none of us would even be here. <laughs> We're talking about the old man. I thought he'd have he'd have been here another century. They know what it is to feel things deeply, and they feel the need to protect this place where their friendships have been forged. They really are capable of that. Let this disappear without allowing them an opportunity at all. That's not something I'm interested in. Kochane. Also, if there are dangers that must be reviewed, it does not have to be right here and now. What could you do to figure that out? You're not really gonna run a cafe for these conniving non-humans, are you? Yes, I am. I'll be taking over the cafe. What? Now that I've made my decision, I'll be treating these people as my guests. Just like the last owner, my grandfather. Miser, hearing my declar declaration besides me. Yeah, you really are cut from the same cloth. The smile is right from his heart. On the other hand, the GPM agent was staring, starting to tremble in fear. This is absurd! all these monsters with freakish powers guests of this cafe? I suppose it sounds absurd, but just as absurd as that we fell in love with crazy with a crazy place like Cafe Enchante. I'm sure the GPM chief believes the most sensible move would be for your organization to handle this as opposed to one person. However, you must consider one thing. Ourselves in that gate, we are too much for you all to handle. Your decision is hardly worth challenging. G why you? Don't get ahead of yourself, little girl. With our power, and your family's reputation can be... Can be what? What do you intend to do? Should I consider your following words? A declaration of war against the Demon King who has accepted the words of this girl? Miser takes one step forward. In one action, I felt an intimidating aura. The air around me suddenly became thin. I could feel the entire world begin to cower before him. The ground, in fact, began to rumble. I could feel a light shaking beneath me. Eek! <laughs> As if pushed back by the aura's presence, an agent falls down back towards the ground. Humph. <laughs> it would be wise to nip this in the bud, but what should we do now, hmm? Miser delivers an icy glare at the agent. Um. Okay, it's a car. However, the sound of a roaring engine filled the atmosphere hanging above us all. Oh, that car! 
A sports car appeared moving towards us in a flash. <laughs> its beautiful chases wedged itself between Miser and the agent. The man who exited the vehicle while scratching his head was none other than... Power Rindu! It's him. Ha. Huh. Oh man, I tried to stop them too. This morning, it was the man who stopped me. It was Kaur Rindo. Hey, Miza. I'm sorry about my free boy. <laughs> sorry about the guns and everything. Looks like they got a little greedy today. I really did try to talk them out of this. Miser dissolves his intense aura and relaxes. His shoulders as Mr. Rindo talks him calmly. I thought as much, but it is you we're talking about. I can bet you've evoked them. I can hear you... I can hear you encouraging them in my head. Haha. <laughs> Come on, what are you even talking about? You <laughs> let things escalate a bit. Hey, Rindo, if you want, I'll make your death quick. Then I'll bring you back and kill you again. You are a mature man. Do not toy with us. Yeah, yeah, alright, sorry. You're all a bit much. Give me some room. Um, um, Mr. Rindo? Oh, hi, Katone. Wow, I just saw you this morning. You still remember me, huh? Yes, you were quite memorable. I had finally remembered the suits that these GPA... GPM agents were wearing. I mean, he's kind of not wearing the same thing, but I guess the vest is just a little different. <laughs> I thought I'd seen them somewhere, and now I realize that they were very similar to his, which I had just seen earlier this morning. This is weird. He's got Angel just next to man in business suit. So this must mean he's the last guest at Enchante who's with the GPM, right? Yes, that would be him. I introduced myself to you once, but I suppose I didn't tell you where I worked. I am Kaur Rindo, Chief Intelligence Officer of the Government Paranormalism Measures. Alright, one of the regular customers at Enchante, working as the GPM Intelligence Division's manager. My job is to protect sweet girls like you from the big, scary non-humans. Pleased to meet you. I see. I was given two business cards from the government agency within the same day. <laughs> Likely due to Mr. Rindo's arri arrival, calming the tension around us, I couldn't seem to find anything else to say to him at the moment. You know him, Katone. Well, in a way. This morning he hit on me? Though I'm, sh I'm sure now that it was just a random chatter to try to figure me out. <laughs> well, maybe if you'd like to see a Demon King turn this man into a pile of dust, eh? What? Hold it, bud. Side note, we know you wouldn't leave a trace behind, so don't go making dusty promises. <laughs> you just snap him out of existence. Just Thanos snap him. As if to avoid conversation with Miser, Mr. Rindo walks to the agents wounded on the ground. Are you happy? Look at you. Did you learn your lesson yet? About taking the advice of your seniors? Chief Frindo! And come on, seriously? Really want to go chase non-humans, you should at least do your homework first. Homework? Incidents like this have occurred before. In the past, the GPM have attempted to force its way into control over Cafe and Chante. Bingo. They changed once they discovered that, that there was a gate here. They were quite immature about it, still are. So, what happened? There was no way we'd let them have it. Well, you can imagine. You could call it a beating. A nice, thorough, hefty beating. We've had a ceasefire agreement since then. But one still in charge of monitoring the cafe is me. That's why I'm a regular, too. You know, you'd all be in enough trouble with a single regular Demon King, but you're trying to take on a boss like Miser. 
last boss, a term that usually indicates the final or strong enemy in a story or game, Rindo calls the regular Zera as being, being the strongest from each world. And often coins the last boss terms to them, which begs the question, is Enchant- What is Enchante and why are they all gathered here? Oh, so like the agents, like essentially just taking on a bunch of like boss characters without knowing what they're doing. A demon king! Wait. Oh no, you guys are kidding me. This is basic knowledge at GPM. My Zerex, who hangs out at Cafe Enchante's, must be a non-human, a demon king. My Zerex, one. A regular customer of Cafe Enchante. He is rarely seen... He is a rarely seen demon king and is also known as the strongest non-human king, surpassing all the non-humans from all other worlds. He is the last boss of all the last bosses. We need to review our training program. That's what Mr. Mirindo muttered as he looked back at us. At the end of the day, I've got to tell you that the raid conducted by these geniuses was not the will of those at the GPM. Please do allow me to apologize. Can we brew the hatchet between us? For me? <sighs> as long as Enchante remains, then I ask for nothing more. You know, Rindo, you're, you being here would have made a difference, but I'm no bully. Best we just stop here. To me, the evil king of the non-humans plucking these little weeds right here. And now it doesn't sound like a bad idea. You look to me as if to ask for permission. I vigorously shake my head to the side. I'm alright as long as you don't do anything to harm the cafe. There you have it. The owner has decided to spare you. Oh, what a relief. Okay then, you heard her. Get out of here. I'll have y'all write apologies later too. So I don't think you're out of the woods yet. I'm sorry for pointing a gun at you. Yeah. <laughs> And just so you know, I did try to convince them not to take over the shop. But you've made your decision, haven't you? Yes. The regulars. A demon king, a headless knight, a fallen angel, and a demon beast. Any one of them could cause destruction. I have to say, you own this shop. This entire world could be affected by you. And yet, you still take over Café Enchante. I stare once again at Enchante's sign. I consider the name of this place where Grandpa and the others here have forged so many, many memories together. Yes, I nod as to take it all in. I understand that it's selfish to end of the world. Maybe I don't understand as well as I should, considering something as giant as that. But. When Mizer and the others talked about Grandpa over the years, their warm smiles, all of them so bright and dazzling, they were just so beautiful. I just didn't want to lose that. The regulars focused their attention on my declaration once again. You truly are the granddaughter of someone. I see you really are a good person. Words have shaken me to my core. Well, you think you've gained a little interest in her now, Ing Ignis? <laughs> yeah, that speech was alright. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I decided on my own without asking any of you. That's quite alright. We couldn't tell you directly, but we we're all hoping that you take over the shop. Talking to us so formally is annoying. If you're gonna stay, talk to us normally. It's just weird otherwise. Oh, uh, understood. Uh, I mean, sure. Meanwhile, Mr. Rindo stood as if he gave up shaking his head. I see. It's useless to try to convince you otherwise. If you arrived at the decision on your own? With a bitter smile, Mr. Rindo looks at Miser and the others. And if Enchante reopens for business, I'll stop by from time to time. Mostly to just keep tabs on all of you, of course. But, um, if any non-humans here ever give you any trouble, please remember to call me, okay, my little shopkeeper? Okay. I'm sure I will, Mr. Rindo. Uh, 
that is absurd. We would do nothing to hurt her. Absolutely. She's far more valuable than you, Rindo. Hey, wait a sec, Rindo. Think you're just gonna sneak away? Your crap today deserves a little payback. Haha. <laughs> um, no thanks. Besides, we humans have a saying. Live to fight another day. Smiling, Rindo escapes as Ignis chases him. This cafe has been a nurturing environment of friendships for the regulars, Mr. Rindo included. These interactions cross the boundaries between humans and non-humans alike. I turn back towards Enchante. I'm sure conversation like this happen every day throughout the history of the cafe. Maybe it, it may be up to me to be able to bring back that kind of spirit around here. I still don't know anything and that goal seems so very far away now. But still, I'm sure. Kotone. Huh? We hope you'll take good care of us. Yeah. Alright, that's the conclusion of chapter one. Now chapter two. Okay, I didn't expect the chapters to be that long. Um... So yeah, I, I was considering maybe breaking it up into smaller pieces, or... Um, I could just release this by chapters and maybe just take like a day off <laughs> to, to catch to catch my breath. But yeah, I think I'll do it that way. Like longer episodes, but just like not daily, not daily uploads. All right, anyway, we'll continue chapter two next time. I hope you guys had a relaxing time and I'll see you in the next episode. Oh, bye bye.